Good evening, guys. So, uh, a whole another month. You guys freaking love this. So many bright, shiny new faces. So, I've got a kind of chill story for you guys tonight. It's going to be a little somber. Uh, first off, um, to everyone who's not a father, happy not a Father's Day. You're proving that condoms work. Be proud of yourself, trust me. But, um, so, this one actually goes out to my father. Um, this is a story about how my father tried and failed to stop me from being gay or queer. But I still love him to death anyway. So, uh, to start this story, uh, simply put, I grew up goth in the country. I came from a small town, Walton, North Carolina. Uh, our, our town was so small that we had county fairs in the student parking lot. So, it was really, really small. The thing is, um, the town kind of resented us. We, we were six goth kids, you know, all pale, except for me. Um, wearing, wearing black, you could like see us in the middle of the field. And uh, we just kind of had an idea that the town didn't like us. But we really learned one day when we went to a football game, like nobody would sit near the black hole area down by the edge of the bleachers. Yeah, so we left that game and we were, we were feeling kind of low. We hung out at my friend Sonny's house, who is male, and uh, his girlfriend, Jesse. Uh, who is female, uh, because we're in the South, Sonny and Jesse are just, they're just male. You know, you meet somebody who's female with uh, Sonny or Jesse, uh, first off, they're a trucker. <laughs> and second off, they're incredible in the sack. And I need to ride home. <laughs> so, well, they were there, our king and queen. We we're all teenagers, and uh, we were feeling kind of low, and Jesse started petting my back, and Sunny started rubbing my head, and our other friends were all just kind of close. And well, one thing led to another, and it was my first orgy ever <laughs> in high school. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to start the story off by saying um, that, well, simply put, I want to tell you the first story of my first orgy, and I wanted to thank my dad. Oh. <laughs> but also that he wasn't there. <laughs> he didn't drive me there. <laughs> but. It was the first time I ever realized I was polyamorous before I even had the word. The word polyamory to me has only existed for like the past five, six years. So for me, um, they, they were just my, my lock and key. And for three months after I had my first orgy ever and was completely connected to these guys, they, they were the thing I would think about when I go to bed. They were, they were the reason why my grades were good. They were the reason why I was functioning well in the South, being God. Um, you know, being able to see me when I smile at night. You know, it was just awkward for a lot of people. So the thing is, uh, my dad owns a farm. And he would teach me every rope tying technique, you know, to keep the animals in line and also to make sure the fences they both don't fall down. And I would use those techniques on my friends because I had a poly tool that didn't know it. We'd go to the county fair and we thought it was really cool to just have our girlfriends, because we shared them, um, on our backs. Uh, the preacher hated it. You know, he'd be walk up, you know, like cross one and be like, you there, young man, out of town now. What are you doing with that there young fair fun on your back? <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, Pastor Steve, um, well, uh, we all went out to eat, and I just took mine to go. <laughs> you need God, boy. It's like, my, my dad's Christian. Like, he'll pour over to me. It's like, you really need God. And, and then I made several people say, oh, God, but that's not the point. <laughs> so, eventually got back to my school. Because um, bliss, bliss is wonderful, but it doesn't last forever. So... My dad gets a call one day uh, from my principal, and uh, he says, uh, Mr. Blake, uh, we feel like your son has been dating several of the girls in town. Um, we, we, we just don't think it's the best for the community. We wanted to know if you could have a talk with them. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so my dad, again, he's a good old Christian man, but also desperately not wanting a gay son, sits me down. It's like, son, I'm going to make this short and quick. Are you hurting those girls? No, sir. No, no. We, we all love each other. It's great. We, we take turns dating, do each other homework. It's great. And it's like, they know about each other? It, yeah, yeah. The, they all know about each other. We, we all talk and explain everything. And they even have boyfriends too, and it's fine. And he turned around, took a long breath, grabbed me by the shoulder, squeezed hard, and said, Son, you using Magnum condoms? <laughs> Great parents, like when I am 40 years old, I'm gonna have a trampoline and like just a VR set. Like I'm, I'm gonna be a kid forever. But my dad, um, 
I looked at him and said, no, sir. No, no but I, I, can, I can upgrade him. He looks at me and he says, only if the fit, boy. <laughs> only if the fit. So, and I just got away with that for years. Like my dad, cowboy hat and all, right? Farm, cattle, sheep, peacock, South Carolina. And he'd just be like, he's like, you know that boy of yours is wild. I was like, yeah, but he ain't gay. And I'm sorry, no punchline there. I got away with shit. Because <laughs> I wasn't gay. Or at least um, he didn't know yet. So. <laughs> so eventually, uh, one of me and one of the girls, name's Ashley, I love her to death. Um, we decided to, to pair up and be a little more direct towards each other. I'm going to hurry this up because I want to get to the end and not take up too much time. Um, and the thing is, she had a bad home life. And my dad has the biggest heart. So my dad found out about this kid in town who didn't have a really good home life, decided to go to the, the city and adopt her. He didn't know that that woman was my girlfriend. So my dad brings home my girlfriend, front door, and I'm like, all right, dad, well, my girlfriend's my sister now. <laughs> Where is she gonna sleep? And my dad again just is hoping to God and praying to God his you know, son's, son's not gay. He's like, well, and he, he was like a bit of a Republican too, but he became really liberal when it came to this. <laughs> He's like, well, you know, son, um, you know, your bed's kind of creaky. I, I bought you a, a Tempur-Pedic feather bed. You can throw a bowling ball and crash a car into it. You won't hear a thing. You guys will sleep well. <laughs> Ashley's as red as a brush, right? Like, we're teenagers about to graduate from high school, and he's just was like, there you, go, there you go, son. I'm like, okay, dad, how about this one? Where is she going to shower? And it's like, well, you know, son, um, they've been saying a lot, it's like, with the water, a bit much. So what I did is I installed you a, a Amazon rainfall shower set. Plenty of space for you guys both to stand in there and stand in the way to be on it. And I'm like, oh, okay, dad, what about her clothes? Where are we going to put her clothes? And it's like, well, you know, we'll share, I'll build a bigger closet for you, son. Just don't wear the clothes. <laughs> so, uh, I told you this story, that story to tell you this, because I do love my dad. Uh, to have everything in my life he's, I've ever tried, he supported me in uh, ballroom dance, um, bull riding. I went to Japan um, on his ticket and competed, things like that. But one day I did come out to him as bisexual. I'm sorry, you guys, like, the, you're the right shape, man. You do it for me. I'm sorry. Like, you work out, let's, let's, let's love those weights. But, um... <laughs> I came up to my dad, told him I was bisexual, and he turned around, said, you know what, son, go ahead and love who you want to love. You know, all I asked for me, your old man, is that you don't be the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what, dad, you're out there, and he is, still alive, kicking, probably fighting with a cow right now. But you're out there, dad, I love you, but I have failed you. <laughs> Thank you.